from Senator Boni Karwale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir. Question number 065 for the record purposes. Yes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, could the Cabinet Secretary confirm that following the presidential directive to upgrade the Kakamega airstrip to an international airport, the leadership of Kakamega County undertook public participation, obtained consent to relocate residents from uh, their earmarked land and conducted survey and valuation of the land for purposes of compensation? And two, what steps the, is the national government taking to execute the presidential directive? Are they two or they are, is, uh, is that all? Okay, uh, CS. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to appraise this house on the information sought regarding the status of the upgrading of Kakamega Airstrip to an international airport as requested by Senator Boni Halwale and as communicated uh, in the letter uh, to my office. Um, Mr. Speaker, the Kenya Airports Authority received an invitation uh, dated 10th August 2023 from County Government of Kakamega requesting for technical assistance in planning and the proposed expansion of the airstrip. Subsequently, a team comprising of the representative of KAA a Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, National Land Commission, and uh, County Government of Kagamega carried out an inspection of Kagamega, Kagamega Airstrip on 18th and 19th of October 2023 to assess the proposed upgrade of Kagamega Airstrip. Honorable Speaker, I wish to inform the House that uh, the Senate that the Kagamega Airstrip was initially designed for DHC-6 aircraft, which capacity of 13 passengers as the critical aircraft and was to be upgraded to accommodate Fokker 50 aircraft to 60 seater. The biggest aircraft currently operating at the airstrip is Dash 8 uh, Q100. Uh, Mr. Speaker, and I launched this uh, service from Wilson to uh, by Skyward, uh, limited from Wilson to Kagamega uh, uh, early this year with a 37 passenger seater, uh, seat capacity. Based on the design, uh, aircraft and considering the topographical and environmental constraint, planning studies conducted by the authority indicate that the runway can only be extended up to a maximum of 1,400 meters. Ultimately, in the future, traffic may necessitate bigger aircraft requiring a longer runway. Then the airport relocation will have to be considered. Mr. Speaker, the proposed upgrading of the airstrip will require acquisition of approximately uh, 20 hectares, hectares of land uh, this is to allow development of critical facilities as well as uh, comply with the International Civil Aviation Organization recommended standards in terms of critical separation and obstacle limitation requirement. During the site visit at Kagamega Airstrip, the county government of Kagamega appraised the team from K and KCA on the survey and evaluation of the parcels of the land affected by the proposed airstrip expansion. However, the evaluation of the affected parcel of land has to be verified by the National Land Commission in accordance with the Lands Act 2012 and the National Land Commission Act No. 6 of 2012. Further, the authority will undertake the environmental and social impact assessment and resettlement action plan for the airport expansion. Let me just say uh, the, the technical report talks about 20 acres, but I don't think, Mr. Speaker, we need the 20 hectares per se to, to, to extend to the 200 meters. And uh, so I have had a conversation uh, with uh, my team that it is possible to achieve 200 meters fast even before we're acquiring the full uh, 20 hectares. So I have asked them to go back and check um, what the limited number of acres we need specifically to fast extend to 1,400 meters uh, so that then it can accommodate slightly bigger plants of about 60 to 70 capacity. Honorable Speaker, a multi-agency team comprising of Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, Kenya Airports Authority, and Kenya Metropolitan Department 
proposes to undertake an aeronautical study to assess the suitability and potential impacts of the proposed extension of the runway to 1.4 km kilometers and in addition evaluate the possibility of relocating Kagamega Strip to Shikuza as proposed by the county government of Kagamega. However, again, as I consulted my team, Shikuza, Shikuza is uh, 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 government land under the Ministry of Forestry, Mr. Speaker, and you know to acquire it will require a big process, including exercising that property, uh, that land, that will require parliamentary approval before we can be able to do so. I thank you. Senator Bon has been very, very attentive. Yes. And on two eyes. So, what is your supplementary question, Senator Bon Karwat? Mr. Speaker, I'm lost. I'm lost because the minister has come to this house with a casual answer, describing stories of aircrafts, size of aircrafts and things and things, which has nothing to do, Mr. Speaker, with the question that I, I raised. This casual answer, minister, you know, you and I, we enjoy leadership positions in this government. We can talk to each other here and talk to each other behind the tent and talk to each other in our private offices as we do. The purpose of this question, Minister, is for us now to bring it in the open to the public in Kakamega to know the progress of this project. The seriousness, Minister, is that 611,000 people voted for President William Ruto against 955,000 for Raila Odinga. There was work that was done. And now, when you treat us casually like this, you know that on 8th of December, 2022, the president came Senator to Kakamega. Senator Boni, can you be very specific on your question? Mr. Speaker, sir, because he was casual. You know the history of the uh, voting and uh, what happened? Uh, yeah, I've left out his history of voting. Just specific your indulgence. what you really need to be addressed. Mr. Speaker, your indulgence, please. If I don't do this, I'll lose this house, I'll lose the public. Mr. Speaker, on 8th of December 2022, the president came into Kakamega and launched this project, and alongside it, commercial aircrafts, which have been ongoing. He came again, Mr. Speaker, on 18th of June this year, and announced the construction of an apron at 50 million shillings, the minister knows. And lastly, Mr. Speaker, on 25th of August, the president stayed in the county for five days, and this was the project. So I was expecting the minister was coming here to tell us only two things. When is the payment of, for residents going to commence? Because from that time last year, they stopped doing end development. They know they are moving out. And two, to tell us when is the construction starting? That is called, <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Those Mr. Are Speaker, very sir. Pertinent questions, and uh, yeah. I think they are very indirect. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I feel extremely offended that this is how we are treating the public that gives us the same money that we, we use to, wait to develop projects. You wait for the answer, Senator Mboni, and then you can maybe react later on. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker uh, of course I have uh, maximum respect for <laughs> the Senator uh, Halwale, not just because we serve together in this chamber, but because he is at the top leadership of this administration. The Speaker, I have given the answer, and that is the answer. The answer being, Mr. Speaker, that first, we can't go beyond 1.4 kilometers. The international standards that are observed for establishment of an airport, Mr. Speaker, tells us that in terms of the approach to that runway, we can only accommodate 1.4 kilometers. And to do so, Mr. Speaker, we must acquire land. I spoke to Governor Barasa this morning, 
uh, on the same issue, Mr. Speaker, because Senator Kalwale knows one thing, that in the said meeting, the county government offered to acquire the land. And Mr. Speaker, that is why there was a meeting between KA, KCA, and county government. The answer is very clear. It says, Mr. Speaker, that the acquisition of land can only be achieved under the law through the National Land Commission. Mr. Speaker, the answer is also very clear that to achieve an international standard, a different place must be sought to establish an international airport. An international airport, Mr. Speaker, cannot be built in the location where we have, and with the expansion that uh, is needed, it would require billions of money to even try to move people. Mr. Speaker, that is our government, Honorable Kalwale. That is the situation we found ourselves. It requires you are in the meeting. You are in the meeting, Mr. Speaker, and the answer of, uh, Mr. Speaker, 400, 400 million was required in the discussion in the meeting for purpose of, Mr. Speaker, uh, expanding, uh, the county government say that to acquire that land, they need 400 million from KAA and the national government. The president made it clear that the support would be needed, uh, Mr. Speaker, for purpose of expanding that land from a partnership with county government. So, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable CS cannot come to the chambers and August House, a very respectable house, and give an answer that is outside the technical advice that comes with the specification of what an airport looks like, Mr. Speaker. But I appreciate the passion that with which Senator Kalwale is prosecuting this matter. It helps my ministry if it was possible that Parliament appropriate some money for purpose of that acquisition, if that passion also can be channeled to the National Assembly to look for the resources. But we know the, the, the circumstances under which we are operating, Honorable Kalwale, that we must keep certain level of fiscal discipline because of the challenges we have as a government. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you. Uh, now we go as per my directive. I want to open the next 30 minutes to the member senators to ask supplementary questions, especially on airports, who has a similar supplementary question so that we tighten up this process. We you ask you as your supplementary? Just two minutes, Senator Sifuna. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, just like uh, Senator Khalwale, I believe uh, with great respect that uh, the CS misunderstood the question that I asked and he answered the question, the wrong question. The question I was asking, Honorable Speaker, is if you look at the design of the terminal of JKIA, provision was made for drop of points of passengers coming in, not the ones on the air side, uh, Honorable CS, not the ones on the air side. You're talking about passenger boarding bridges. No, that's not what I'm asking. Provision was made for drop of points at the terminal uh, entrances, but those accesses were blocked. That's what I'm asking. Why is it not possible? What is the rationale? And in this house, we will insist on honesty. I want the CS to be honest to the people of Kakamega. There is no business case for an international airport in Kakamega. That's what you need to say. Say that the president lied. That is what you need to say so that we move forward. Mr. Speaker, I thank you. CS, kindly. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I thank uh, my learned friend, uh, Senator uh, of Nairobi, for, for, for the clarification. I understood you initially to be the passengers that are arriving. You mean the passengers that are traveling. Mr. Speaker, there was a security uh, protocol that was established, particularly when we entered into agreement with uh, the UK and the US administration to enable us to have direct flights, particularly to the New York. And part of those protocols was to ensure that uh, we keep to dropping uh, passengers at a reasonable distance uh, uh, to, the, to the terminal itself. That is why you see all that area has been blocked. You know, your people are dropped a little bit far away, not very far though, but about, say, uh, is it if I guess maybe 50 meters away from the veranda. But also the construction of Terminal 1A after the fire of 2013, 2014, never put into consideration the need to have a good veranda 
and canopy that can be able to, people can be dropped properly. So there was a design problem that happened and we acknowledge. In fact, in the reports of KA, the, the discussion is how do you uh, now remodify the existing terminals and put it on a canopy that can come way uh, in front that will allow us then to drop people where, uh, a place where there is shade. So that was a design issue. But there's even a more uh, critical problem. At the main gate, the main gate up there, people have to alight, then they are sighted, then the car is sighted before you go in. If you, uh, uh, three weeks ago, in uh, chairing a meeting that is multi-agency at the airport, I instructed the uh, people working on the port charter to, and the K itself also, to work towards us getting scanners at the entrance that look like all the other parts of the world that will enable us to scan vehicles and scan everybody without really requiring anybody to, to alight. What has happened in other countries also is advanced passenger information is provided for before passengers come, come to the airport. So by the time someone, you know, what other countries have done is that they have a general data of everybody. By the time you're coming to the airport, they know it's in this car. So police only stop a certain car if they have certain suspicion. But in our case, because of the same, same uh, desire to maintain our direct flights to New York, people have to alight and search. But going forward, we are thinking of how can you get scanners that can be able to check the vehicles on high speed without people being able to alight. So there are two reasons. The other one is a, is a security related, but also the construction and design of the airport never put into consideration that very important factor. On the Kagamega, the president never lies and never lied. Uh, the, the point is that, uh, and Senator Kalwale was there, it was a partnership between the national and the county government. And there are certain commitments that the county government gave. In fact, in, uh, I can say this because uh, I think I was called when the meeting was going on. The, the county government uh, uh, committed that they, it, is, it is easy for them to get the land, only for them to realize later that it is very costly. It will need about 400 million, which is not available in our county government. So because of that situation, the discussion that we've been having is to, res uh, to find out how can you fast move to 1.4 kilometers, you know, as you think about making the airport reach two kilometers and so forth. It is important to have aerodromes in most parts of the country. To, it eases communication. People going to Kagamega are now landing there. They are home on time. We want to make it a commercially viable airport that can carry at least 60, 70 people. And uh, speaking to your governor this morning, we agreed that we should have a meeting for all the leaders uh, to discuss both the roads and the air, air strip itself. And Senator Alwale, uh, time permitting, we should do so before the end of this uh, year. And if, if there's any delay, let's do it the first week of, 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 uh, of January or the second week of January. We agree exactly what can count still be able to do. You know many people in the county are proposing you go to that land. It's called issue. It's uh, near the, 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 the forest, Sikusa. Uh, but again, as I've told you, I've done my homework and, found, and I've, I've found that you will need a long process, including parliamentary approval, for you to exercise a forest land to move the airport to that place. And my answer is as clear as it is. And you are always uh, welcome to have further discussion on this issue. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Senator Mbone, I think uh, all those answers are very comprehensive, and you know where to go for more answers in my attempt. So maybe allow me to give other senators maybe to... Yes. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, just to thank the minister for this. But, Minister, the story of Shukosa the story of acquisition of public land, I have no idea where it is coming from. Because as you know, in a meeting where the president talked to you, and he was meeting with me, he told you that the governor has found it difficult to raise 400, and could you now talk to him so that the national government will pay half and the county government will pay half. You remember the conversation. So, you should be coming here telling the people of Kakamega that the national government is paying the half and the county government the other half and people will start moving away. But if you are choosing to treat it casually the way you are doing, 
Minister. Senator Mboni, uh, sorry, uh, if, 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 if I don't ventilate in, gov in Parliament for the people of Kakamega, where will I speak from? From my funeral? I, I know you are talking to Kakamega people now. Yes. But, but what I'm requesting you to do, the CS has requested Kakamega leadership to have a meeting. Yes, By Mr. Speaker. That is where you can converse. All yes, Mr. Together. Speaker, sir, with the respect to the people who vote for us, Allow me to tell the minister that the go-round that he wants to give me with the governor, when the people are waiting to be paid, it does not require leaders to meet. We have already been to those people's homes. They have given us their consent. Their properties have been valued. Payment must be made. Minister, have you changed your mind as government? on payment of these people, or are you going to pay? If you're going to pay, when are you paying? Life has to go on. So I, I think, uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's conclude that matter. And, uh, maybe what we can say is that your question is not satisfactorily answered. Then we have another opportunity for the CS to, to have uh, that bit. Mr. Speaker, um, two things. One. Uh, as I, I, again, I appreciate the passion with which Senator Kalwale, and I want to tell the people of Kagameka who are listening, your senator is extremely passionate on this issue. But Mr. Speaker, there is another step. Every financial expenditure requires a budget. Mr. Speaker, even the 200 million, uh, Honorable Senator Kalwale is saying, Mr. Speaker, that uh, should be paid by us and the county is paying 200. Even that county doesn't have that 200, uh, Mr. Speaker, to pay for the airport. It has an extremely competing interest in the other infrastructural development. So what we should be doing, Mr. Speaker, is to first put our heads together as leadership to see how best can we deliver this infrastructure? How best can we ensure that the price, the cost of acquiring land is not exaggerated so that then, you know, it becomes expensive to acquire that land. How best can, the, can Senator Kalwale use this passion on the ground, Mr. Speaker, to negotiate with the villagers who live next door and tell them to give way at a reasonable price for us to build the infrastructure? So there is room for us to have a solution. And Mr. Speaker, to remind Senator Kalwale that is also a equally a very high position in this government like myself. And so when he says, you have changed my, my mind, I would retort the question back to Senator Kalwale. Have you changed your mind also as the government on this particular issue? Because me and you are the government. We are the ones who are supposed to work together to solve this problem. And that's why I invited you. We sit down together and solve this issue. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we, we conclude that matter about Kakamega. Then Senator Abduhaji. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, sir. Um, 